What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I have something actually very, very special. I've got some items that we tore apart, some pharmaceutical robots. And uh, today is scavenging day because believe it or not, these things are made with industrial electronics and the components seem to be worth quite a bit of money. However, uh, it's also some cool electronics for projects like let's say building your own CNC machine because that's technically what these things are. Let's go ahead and take a look. I've got some of the robotic uh, transfer assemblies right here and I'm stripping them down. Let's see what's inside. All right, so this here is the entire transfer assembly and yeah, it looks like absolute chaos. And <laughs> that is some of the most valuable components inside the unit. These are OHAS scale control boards. Very interesting. And this is the OHAS scale load cell. Now the interesting part about these is this from their top of the line adventurer series and uh, you know from what I can see those scales cost like two to five thousand dollars. This is an interesting piece. It's a Galil uh, servo controller. These guys are worth about twenty five hundred dollars brand new. I've got several DC servo motors and these ones here have the uh, gear reduction, probably multiple gear reduction to, to look at it. I have some cameras slash barcode scanners. These guys are pretty cool. Don't really know if there's much of a, a use for them, but they are USB mini. I have here some infrared detectors. So uh, these guys here made by Banner, I got the LX6E and the LX6R. Now I know that these guys are about 400 and some dollars each and uh, they detect lots of small things. So inside this device, you put pills into it and then it registers them someplace arbitrarily on a shelving unit. And then when it recalls them, the servo controller here goes X, Y, and Z. And it also has a couple other functions like rotate and whatnot. But uh, the servo controller moves all the motors, tells it what to do, it stages it into the binned areas where they have the camera and they have infrared detectors and they have some positioning sensors and they have the pill counter, which is the scale, that guy right there that I tore out. And uh, all in all, they communicate what is being transferred, how much, the quantity based on weight. And then I believe the camera also records a permanent record of what is being sent out. Now. If you look, I've already got one of them all tore up and scavenged, and I'm not going to go through all of them. However, I did want to see what components are inside them because they are so cool. And, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure. We've got some things like some label printers that were being thrown out, and ah, this is a cool little guy, serial converter, but it's a multiple serial to one USB. Pretty neat stuff. These white boxes right here, these are the actual controllers. So that's the overall computer, and uh, I will go ahead and open up one of those in just a moment and show you guys what's inside. Those things are pretty neat. They're in uh, what looks like NEMA enclosures, so they are uh, basically designed for industrial environments. Now, despite the fact that there is some dirty dirt on the back of it, they are actually particularly clean. Finding these galils. Um, out in the wild that are in this good of a condition is pretty rare because they're used in industrial environments for assembly lines and stuff like that. Now the OHAS scale boards, I will have to look and see if there's even a market for those. However, I would assume there is and it's probably pretty scant. In other words, there's not very many on the market. Uh, here's some other neat pieces. There's some linear slides. See that? We got some linear slides. So uh, that's it for the transport mechanism. Let's go ahead and take a look at the robot itself. All right, here we go. Here you can see a couple of these pill counting robotic masses. Right here is where the transport assembly went in. And inside it, you see that really large arm right there. It's, it's that thing that goes right there. Now, if you can imagine, it can pull from the left and the right. 
and uh, so it's got some sort of rotating capabilities I'm not really sure I haven't tore into it yet I do know there's a DC servo down there that I really like it's uh, belt controlled but yeah right here is where that transport assembly sits you can see all the padded shelves so the padding keeps the things on the shelves and these shelves all aluminum they're crazy strong each one of these robots originally cost a quarter of a million dollars so between 125,000 and a quarter of a million based on um, based on what options you got so yeah the first one we tore completely apart obviously uh, one of the first things I'm gonna strip are these aluminum extrusions right here and right here those things are worth their weight in gold and look at this I have an entire collection of these panel doors which have uh, like almost like a UV type of glass on them and they're all in aluminum extrusion and they're hinged and if I were to put those together they'd probably be a 20 or so foot long wall of just uh, you know maybe a greenhouse or something I haven't really figured out but we got all sorts of these wish I had more property I would definitely build me a greenhouse out of them but uh, you can see some of the covers right there anyway these things were an absolute bear and they are solid aluminum just incredibly heavy it's welded aluminum you can see some of the welds up there just absolutely crazy all right so that is the robots this one's laying outside because believe it or not it was an absolute pain to get out of the building so we had multiple buildings that was our project for this week to remove all these robots how about we take a look at that dc servo there's one of them right there you can see it's a belt fed mechanism pretty cool a little bit of a beast and there should be one floating down there i'm definitely gonna pull that guy yep there's one right there neat neat stuff oh my gosh guys i absolutely love going through stuff like this I mean you never know some of those DC servos could easily be worth over a thousand dollars each but uh, the cool thing about servos is that they're positional and they can control their torque uh, depending on their needs and that is exactly what I need to maybe make another CNC machine or two there's enough components here between the aluminum now uh, maybe one of those Galil uh, servo controllers and uh, all those other DC servo motors and I could build an entire machine with just that uh, also, what you didn't see, and I imagine that these are really high quality because of the nature of these machines. I didn't point it out. Let's see. Is it there? All right. Where is it? Oh, yeah. There it is. All right. Let's go ahead and flip it around. Okay. So there are the belts right here and right here. But something that is probably incredibly expensive and nobody paid attention to are these linear slides that is like a, a seven or eight foot long square linear slide and it's probably industrial I guarantee that it's either European or American made let's see if I can find them on these guys just uh, linear slides yeah right there you can see it right there that is hardened hardened steel and um, their precision bearings and that way there it can slide back and forth constantly and if you're if you have you know an eighth to a quarter of a million dollar product you are probably going to use the best linear slides you can get so there are two of them there's one at the top and there's like one on that rail over there i think there might be one at the bottom but uh those rails are very expensive so if they're the american made ones that are precision which they probably are given the cost and the need for these machines to be running constantly um i would bet that those slides are several thousand dollars each i mean several thousand each so um yeah just no thing let's go ahead and take a look inside the computer cabinet and see what uh goodies are in there okay guys let's go ahead and take a look inside the controller there's some interesting things going on in here let's take a look okay so this is the controller it's inside a well, it looks like a computer case, but it's actually more like a NEMA controller for industrial environments. Pretty neat enclosure. It's got a UPS down here in the bottom. That's a CyberPower UPS. I've got a, uh, what, 7-port USB 3 hub 
We've got a Netgear GS105 router. Uh, let's see, up at the top, I've got redundant uh, power supplies back behind this. You can see part of one, and you can see part of the other ones. I've got a low voltage power supply here, and this one is, let's see, is that a 12 volt? 5.5 uh, amp RMS max. Hard to say, I wonder what the voltage is for that. Might be a 48 volt, it's an NV350 NV power. Um, maybe a 12 volt, 12 and 5 volt, 40 amp. Oh geez, it has 40 amp of 5 volt. And you got two 12 volts, a 13 amp and a 5 amp. That's pretty cool. I've got a uh, series of resettable breakers. Got a Gigabyte GA78 LMT USB 3. Uh, that's the CPU that does the main controlling. And I've got a, uh, a set of HyperX RAM in every single kit. So I don't know if that's eight or 16 gigs. It'll be one or the other. Um, there's a riser card here and Geez, based on that, I don't know if that's SCSI, <laughs> just based on the size of it. There's some power adapters, and what else we got in here? Uh, okay, so that's it's retaining the UPS. And under here, I have several power bricks. So that would be cool. I'll pull those out and see what voltages they are. And let's see, that's some of my power outputs. And it looks like I got some switching down here. Pretty neat. So that's it's really interesting that they have an integrated UPS. So once I pull this guy out, there'll probably be all sorts of space to mount other things in here. But uh, really neat. It's got redundant power supplies, like PC power supplies back here behind this. And then we've got this guy, um, which man, 40 amps of five volt. I imagine it gets pretty warm. <laughs> so you can see it's actively cooled. So anyway guys, that is the tower and you can see I've got four or five of these little guys floating around over here. So um, yeah, I'm gonna check it out and see if it boots up. And uh, this would be like a perfect case for doing um, CNC. Pretty neat. Got some uh, filtration there, cool stuff. So anyway guys, that, that's been my week. It's a, it's a robot that uh, dispenses pharmaceuticals and um, we did five of them this week and uh, they are kind of complex, but uh, when you get down to the brass tacks of it, you know, other than the fact that the wiring is an absolute rat's nest um, and everything is sharp, my, like my hands are definitely all cut up. Um, every single thing is sharp around these, these cases and the chassis. But um, yeah, it was an interesting project and uh, Technically, it was a profitable one, too, so glad that we got it done. I'm going to scavenge some more parts here and uh, throw all the rest of this stuff in the scrap. Is what it is. I think the Neiman enclosures I'm going to keep because uh, those ones do have a uh, definite market value. But um, most of this other stuff, like the open frames, the transport mechanisms for the pills, those have no market value whatsoever. So I'll get what I can off of them, and then after that, it's done. Anyway, guys. That is a, a little brief explanation and, and show and tell of this week's project, which was deconstructing, tearing down, and removing five pharmaceutical robots. You never know what you're going to get. That's the day in life of biomed. So, anyway, thanks for watching, guys.